And the last topic in this section is figuring out standard deviation for grouped data. So remember, sometimes you're going to be given data where instead of just having honest to goodness data points, you're going to have classes. And from the classes, we can approximate a mean, which means then we can approximate some sort of standard deviation to that data set. And this is going to be our formula. So the sample standard deviation for grouped data, which again is going to be represented with S, is equal to the square root of the sum of x minus x bar. And now this x bar is going to be the mean of our grouped data, which we'll review in a sec. You square those deviations, then you multiply by f, where f is the frequency of that class, and then you divide by n minus one. <clears throat> so over here, um, x is going to be the midpoint of our class, f is the frequency of the class, and x bar is the mean of the frequency distribution. And just to recall that, <clears throat> x bar is equal to the sum of the midpoint times the frequency for each class divided by the sum of the frequencies. And that tells you how many data points you have total, but it doesn't tell you necessarily where each data point lives. So suppose you were given the results of a survey in which a thousand adults were asked how much they spend in preparation for personal travel each year. So right away, this is our N. N equals 1000, which means if we were to add up the frequencies, we end up getting that that is 1000. And you'll be able to do that in the chart, just double check, you take those numbers, just add them up, and you should get 1000. <clears throat> so the frequency distribution is given below. What we want to do is use the table to estimate the sample mean and the sample standard deviation of the data set. So we're given these classes of 0 to 99, 100 is a 199, 200 to 299, and so on. What we have to do first is find the midpoint. So remember, the midpoint is equal to the upper class limit plus the lower class limit. divided by two. <clears throat> so for this first one, we take zero, or we take 99 plus zero, which gives us 99, and then divide that by two. So the midpoint is 49.5. Next, we're gonna take 199 plus 100, which gives us 299, and divide that by two, which gives us 149.5. And you just do this all the way down. So that's going to be 249.5, 349.5, 449.5. And then we get to this 500 plus. <clears throat> and since this is an open-ended class, we have to make a choice here. And what we're going to do is just choose a midpoint <clears throat> that is within reason. So why don't we say 599.5 for that midpoint? And then we're told the frequencies. <clears throat> and we go ahead and to get this column, we take 49.5 times 380, which gives us 18, 810. Then we take 149.5 times 230, which gives us 34, 385. And we just keep doing that. So we take 249.5 times 210, which gives us 52, 395. And the next one will be 17, 475, 26, 970. And then lastly, we have 41, 965. All right, so before we can move into the next column where we find the deviation, we need to figure out what the uh, 
mean of the frequency distribution is. So I'm going to take and figure out x bar, which again is the sum of x times f over the sum of the frequencies. Now, again, this x right here is going to be the midpoint of each class. f is the frequency of that class. And so we add up this entire column, which gives us 192000 over the sum of the frequencies, which should add up to the number of people surveyed or whatever. And that turns out to be 1000. So if you do that division, you get that the mean of the frequency distribution is 192. <clears throat> so on average, people, that how much they spend in preparation for personal travel each year, it looks to be about $192. <clears throat> Next, we wanna figure out how much spread this data set has. So we're gonna to have to first find all the deviations. We take X minus X bar, so we take 49.5 minus 192, and we end up getting negative 142.5. Then we do the same thing with 149.5 minus 192, which gives us negative 42.5. And we just keep going. So 57.5, 157.5, 157.5. And then we take 599.5 minus 192, which gives us um, 407.5. Once we have all the deviations, this next column is those deviations squared. So the important thing here is that you'd have absolutely no negatives in this new column. So we're gonna take negative, I'll just write it off to the side, negative 142.5. If you're plug it in, plugging it into a calculator, you need parentheses around everything, and then you can square it. And once you have the parentheses around everything and you square it, you should be getting 20,306.8. Uh, 20, And we just do that for each value. So we get 1806.25. Next one is 3306.25. Next is 24806.25. Next is 66. 306.25 and then lastly it's going to be 166,056.25 so those numbers get large really quick and what we have to do now for this final column is take the frequency of that class times the sum or times the deviation squared to give us this position in this column. So for the first one, we're going to take the x minus x bar squared, which for us in this first one is 2306.25, and then we multiply it by the frequency. So that's going to be 380. When you do that, you end up getting 7,716,375.0, which is kind of nice. And that goes right here. So 7716,375.0. And you'll do that for each and every one of those classes. To expedite it, this gives us 415.437. 437.5, then we have 694, 312.5, 1,240, 
3,000, or sorry, 3,978,375.0. And lastly, we have 11,623,937.5. Cool, so some big numbers, but definitely manageable. Just be careful when you're doing this on your own by hand that you're making sure to write down everything that's in the calculator and make sure that whatever you're writing into the calculator accurately reflects what's in the table. So you may wanna just double check back and forth between uh, what you're writing in the calculator and what you're writing in the chart, and you may need to double check your work just to, to be careful. So once we have this whole column filled out, we're going to take the sum of x minus x bar squared times f. And all this combination symbols really means is you take these six numbers and add them up. And once you do that, you get 25,668,750. And we're almost, almost there. We have the sum of the squares times the frequency over here. We have the whole chart filled out. We know what the sum of the frequencies is to begin with, which was a thousand. And so the standard deviation for this um, frequency distribution, S, again, just writing down the definition. I highly recommend writing down the definition just to get comfortable with the symbols. It's the square root of the sum of the, ver uh, the deviation squared times the frequency all over n minus one. And since we did this really organized, we already know what that sum is. And we know that we started with a thousand adults. And so if we did a thousand minus one, you get 999, and then you have square root here. So just be careful when you're plugging into a calculator that you include everything inside of the square root. Don't close up parentheses too soon. And if you would like help using a calculator, um, please email me or ask during office hours, just because there's a lot of symbols floating around and it's really important that certain things happen at certain times and a calculator is only going to do what you ask it to do. So if you're uncertain about how things get plugged in, just let me know and we can go over that um, sometime. So you just throw that into a calculator and if you want, take care of that right now to make sure that you're plugging everything in correctly. If you did, you should be getting 160.3 as the sample standard deviation. And so what that means, these are the two numbers that we're looking for. We were looking for the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. So roughly, on average, people are spending about $192 preparing to travel, but there's a huge standard deviation of $160.3 with this standard deviation. 